What's up, fish gang? Welcome back to Monster Fish Only, aka Mofo Fish. We talk about monster fish and monster tanks. I'm your host, OGP, and today we're talking about the fire mouth cichlid. No, I'm not talking about your ex girlfriend from high school. We're talking about the cichlid. This is fish stuff. Duh. DJ, run the intro. Oh, hey, fish gang, fish gang. You know we come alive from the fish tank. Don't be getting mad cause you're fish lame. Yeah, every time you hit, I do a water change. Fish gang, fish gang. You know we come alive from the fish tank. Don't be getting mad cause you're fish lame. Yeah, every time you hit, I do a water change. Woo! Water change, 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 water change. First, I want to give a huge shout out to the Fish Gang. We are at over 500 subscribers. That's super cool, especially for a content creator like me. Thank you guys so much for all the support. If you're new here, get in the mofo comment section, hit the mofo like button, hit the mofo subscribe button so we can get this content out to more crazy fish people like you. As always, I like to start off with a quick overview and a quick rundown of the species for the Gen Z fish keepers. Temperament. Semi-aggressive. Color form, red and gray. Lifespan, 15 years. Size, seven inches. Diet, they're omnivores. Minimum tank size, 55 gallons. Tank temperature, about 75 degrees. Will they get along with others? Maybe. Everybody else who isn't eating cruelty-free Pop-Tarts, let's dive in. Temperament. I've kept these fish with a lot of different species. I've had a lot of success with them. They're probably gonna get along with most of the fish that you try to keep them with. However, they do primarily have to be cichlids, and they do kind of have to be in that same semi-aggressive uh, species and semi-aggressive category. This fish probably wouldn't have an issue being alone. I would probably just keep like five or six of them in like a big old 75 or um, maybe even a 125. I think that they make a great filler fish and I think that they are a species that kind of adds some character to your tank, adds a little bit of movement. They can be very curious. They almost operate as a geophagus. They will dig around in the sand and the cool thing is about it is they can actually hold their own. I've got some that are probably way too undersized to even be inside of this aquarium. They are doing just fine. I mean, they've been in here for probably six months and they're actually growing pretty well. Now, just as a warning, this species can be aggressive. They can be pretty mean. How they are raised also plays a big role in that, but keep in mind that fish do have personalities and they can be individuals. Some of them are just born psycho and they just want problems. Another one will get along fine with everybody and be super happy and it won't be a big deal. Be a responsible fish keeper when you first get it and have a backup plan and a separate tank to put it in if it's not getting along with the other species until you can find a new scenario or find a new home. Let's go ahead and talk about their diet. I find the best diet for them are sinking pellets. There you go. When you look at the style of feeding. As I mentioned earlier, they kind of behave like geophagus. If you're not a super big fish nerd like me, typically eat from the bottom, they disturb the sand, they figure out what's going on, they kind of sift through it, and then they eat, you know, all the leftover stuff. So they will naturally sit uh, closer towards the bottom, and they will kind of eat closer towards the bottom, so the sinking food works out better. They will swim up to the top, they will participate. Um, however, I've just found that it's easier for them when it's a sinking pellet. You can get your own kind. The shrimp pellets are super cheap. They work just fine for them. They still look good. Now, as I mentioned, they are omnivores. They are cichlids. Cichlids do like to you know, participate in um, pescatarian behavior. If you want to try to introduce you know, some type of uh, feeder type of uh, species, I would recommend going with ghost shrimp. Um, that kind of just fits very naturally with them. They will go nuts for them. The ghost shrimp obviously will hang out towards the bottom. They will go crazy and they'll nab them right up. What I do, if I wanna feed them some feeders, I got a quarantine tank, I throw them in here, I treat the feeders first, and then I say have at it. Let's talk about 
Lifespan and size. A lifespan is about 15 years. That's a pretty long time when it comes to a lifespan of a fish. Pretty big commitment if you're going to plan on keeping the species. They're not extremely difficult to take care of. All you have to do is make sure you have really good filtration. Um, they're pretty hardy, so they can take a little bit of uh, lazy fish keeping, but obviously I don't recommend that at all. I would recommend taking care of them, and it's very simple. You do your 25 to 50% water change once a week. You have decent filtration. Give them a decent sized tank with some sand, and you're gonna have a happy, healthy fish. The maximum size is somewhere about seven inches. So you can get a pretty big fish um, when you buy it about the size of a quarter. It's gonna take you a while to get it that large. I would probably say somewhere around the two to three year range to get it to be fully, fully grown out. But you can probably expect from anywhere between a year and maybe, maybe 18 to 19 months, you'll probably end up with about a four inch fish. It takes a while for them to grow. I've got mine in the 125. They're actually sitting at about three inches now. Um, and I got them back in February and it's about to be uh, November, so September 30th. So that's a pretty decent, you know, uh, time frame, you know, for them to put on that amount um, of weight and size in that time frame. So they do grow fairly fast, but again, it's, it's the fish hobby. Everything's gonna take time. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and talk about tank size and setup. And I said minimum tank size is a 55 gallon. Some of the nuts on the internet are gonna say 40 gallon breeders, 30 gallon tanks. I wouldn't mess around with that. I, I, I would say at least a uh, 55. Setup, tank setup. We're gonna be looking at a couple caves for them to hide in, a couple, you know, spaces for them to occupy that they feel safe in. They will kind of hide away at some times into these nice little caves in their natural habitat. That's what they like to enjoy. And then they will end up coming out to, to feed or to kind of fend off and defend their space and do what they have to do. You want to have um, a sandy substrate. We kind of alluded to it earlier. They do like to sift around in the sand like a geophagus. Um, that's the best for them. They do enjoy that sandy substrate. I've got a pretty decent amount of sand in the bottom of my tank. I probably could have a little bit more, but I don't really want to have a huge thick layer. It's kind of a pain in the neck. You want to throw a couple rocks in there, a couple caves for them to hide in. And uh, believe it or not, you can actually have some types of plants in there. It's still a cichlid. It's going to bang stuff around. It's going to move stuff around. Um, as you can see, <laughs> that was perfectly timed. Uh, but at the same time, you're going to uh, want to make sure that you keep it simple. If I was setting this tank up brand new, specifically just for fire mouth cichlids, I'd have a couple medium-sized rocks, a couple medium-sized caves, some nice sand, paint the black, back of the tank black, and get some decent lighting, and I think that those fish would really pop in there and they'd look really good. That kind of spins it into tank mates. Um, I wouldn't really be able to say uh, anything too, too specific that's gonna work perfectly but uh, I can say that other medium-sized cichlids seem to work the best. Nothing probably too mean. Like I wouldn't try to go and put like a five-star general in there. Red tiger motos or any type of the, you know, small growing paracromis type of species. Eh -eh. But I would probably do something like convict cichlids or uh, rams or maybe even electric blue acoras. Stuff like that. If you're gonna have it with some other type of species, I'd say go ahead and jump up to a 75. That'll probably be the best. And you can find 75 gallons for relatively cheap. Yeah, seriously. Take your time, set your tank up the way you want it to be set up. You will enjoy the hobby much more. If you haven't already, hit the mofo like button, get in the mofo comment section, hit the mofo subscribe button, get this crazy content out to other fish people like you. Thanks for hanging out with us today. That's all we got for you. I'm out of the tank. Thanks for watching. Hey you. Yeah, fish food. If you subscribe to the channel already, then welcome to the fish game. But if you haven't, shame on you. Keep in mind, every time you subscribe to a channel, particularly maybe this one, your fish live a little bit longer. It's science. It's real science.
But, in all seriousness, we get a chance to win some free stuff. So hit the subscribe button, enter for your chance to win. Um, all you have to do is just subscribe. Um, it's going to be a Sun Sun canister filter, uh, the 304B, rated for like 525 gallons per hour. Um, I would give you guys something that I don't personally use or I haven't personally tested. So I do have it on three of my ticks. I've got it on this uh, 75 here, and I've got it on two 125s. So um, we will be giving it to one of our lucky viewers for absolutely free. All you have to do is just hit the subscribe button, comment you love mofo fish, and hit that like button. We're out of the tank.